Hi, and welcome back to the Geospatial Centroids series of videos on geospatial analyses. Today we're going to be working in R again, specifically with a package called RayShader that allows uh, for easy 3D visualization. I'm Matt Ross, and I'm the interim director of the Centroid. The goals for today are pretty simple. Um, we're just trying to learn the easiest way to get elevation data, and we're going to provide a brief introduction to RayShader and 3D Viz in R. Um, again, this video is just sort of like the last one I made, a really a quick intro. It's not meant to be sort of comprehensive in any way. Um, if you want to use this package, I'll have links in the in the file. We're going to start off uh, where we left off on our last video. So in our last video, we downloaded some data on precipitation gauges in Colorado, and we made a map um, that was interactive where we could see where we measure rainfall and snow in Colorado, and that was that's all this uh, code. And today we're going to take that one step further and make a 3D map um, using the same data to show us sort of like intuitively which one of these uh, precipitation gauges are at high elevations and low elevations. So we're going to be using a package called Ray, Ray Shader, uh, another package called USA Boundaries just to get some uh, a city so we can see where we are in 3D space. Uh, we're going to be using a raster package and we're going to be using the suite package called Elevator to download elevation data. So I'm just going to run all that code up here. And the final output of our previous uh, video was this 3D map on the, or this interactive map on the bottom right. And you can see, you can get some topography here and that some of these uh, uh, precip gauges are sort of far out in the plains and some are in the mountains. But uh, even though this is a really nice interactive 3D map, uh, I think we can do a little bit better with RayShader. So first we're going to prep and download our data. And to do that, um, we just want to start with this co-spatial object. I'd like to reproject that into an equal area projection. Just kind of looks better with the um, 3D viz. So we'll say co equal area, and we're just going to reproject it using uh, the transform function. So we're going to take co-spatial, and we're going to do st transform. We're going to transform it into EPSG2163, which is an equal area projection for the whole United States, um, but it works pretty well for this, this example. And uh, we can just quickly plot that. It's just going to show a bunch of plots and uh, dots in space. Um, so that's all it is. So it's just reprojected to be equal area instead of WGS84, which is a global projection. Um, so then the next thing we're going to do is do uh, we're going to download some elevation data. And so that is where we use the magic of that elevator package. And so we're going to say co elev, and we're going to do git elev raster. And here we feed it our location data, as you can see from the sort of function call. And the location data in this case is that co equal area. And then the only other um, information this function needs is what is the zoom level. And so this is a, a package where if you put in z equals 1 here, it would be really coarse zoom level, like only a couple of uh, uh, pixels for all of Colorado. And if you put in 14, which is the highest level of zoom, it would be like 3 meter pixels, which would take forever to download, and it might not even allow us. So I played around with this earlier, and z equals 6 was a good uh, – it, it downloaded pretty quickly, and it also um, – uh, was easy to plot quickly. So let's just plot this elevation data that we just downloaded. Again, it's going to download the data for Colorado area, but uh, if you sort of know the Colorado mountains, you know that this goes pretty far down into to New Mexico. So we're just going to crop it using the crop function from the raster package. And um, we're just going to crop it to the extent of our precip gauges. So that's the co-equal area. Um, chunk, and I'm using the pipes here to just do that all in one call. And now if we plot that again, it should just be over Colorado. We can add um, our equal, no we can't, that's the wrong type, never mind. This is just the map for Colorado and that's fine. Um, and, and the goal here is to sort of bring this map together with the precip data so we can see where these precip um, gauges are in a 3D space. Um, and now we have our elevation data and our equal area data. And so now is where we sort of need to start um, altering the data so that it can be 3D mapped. Um, I am just going to go to uh, the, the, the package documentation for RayShader. 
I'm going to close my email so I don't actually accidentally click on that. Um, and so here we have this package called Ratiator. Uh, this video, again, is just an intro. Tyler Morganwall, the developer, has done an amazing job sort of documenting this. So really, if you're going to use this, you're probably going to use his tutorials and not mine. But um, we're going to sort of start with this and uh, his tutorial and, and make our visualization of Colorado. So uh, I'm just going to move this over to the left and shrink the viz window so we can see both. So first, uh, you'll notice that uh, to make visualizations faster, Tyler takes this um, elevation data set and converts it to a matrix. And that's just going to make it faster to visualize. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to just say co-mat, and we're going to say raster to matrix. And we're just going to do co elev here. We're going to run that real quick. And it feeds out us, it tells us the dimensions, which is nice. And you can plot 2D things in Ray Shader, but we're going to just quickly jump to the 3D. Um, so now we're going to just do uh, not L mat, but co mat. And we're going to do sphere shade. We're going to copy the desert texture, which looks nice. There's quite a few different textures you can use. Um, and then we're going to add just a ray shaded shadow. And ray shading, um, if you're not a video gamer who watches NVIDIA release videos, ray shading is just where you track light as a sort of beam throughout the scene, and it gives you really accurate shadows. So that's what's going on in this over here. And um, it just sort of makes the 3D plots look really nice particularly when you have fine meshes or really highly resolved rasters, uh, which we don't here just because this is a demo. And so that's going to be, we're going to ray shade over Comat, um, and we're going to give it a Z scale of 20. And this Z scale that I'm using is just um, because we're at a really coarse scale here. So um, that's the Z scale is the relationship between the height of the raster and the um, width and or the the z of the raster and the x and y dimensions of the of the raster resolution so it's sort of a you're you kind of just tune it based on how fine how finely resolved your raster is so now we're going to do plot 3d co mat and we're going to give it a z scale of 60. i only am doing this because i messed around with it earlier and i thought that looked nice and we're not going to mess with any of the field of view and so now we will um make sure i ran that i did now we'll have a really basic visualization of Colorado's elevation data. And we can uh, make this a little bit bigger and sort of zoom around. And that's, you know, Colorado. Denver's like up here. Fort Collins is up here. Pueblo's down here. And then Fruta and other things are out here. So that's Colorado. Uh, this is a pretty basic map. We'll just close that for now. And then um, what we actually want to do is sort of map out our um, – I need to delete that. Sorry, that's left over from trials earlier. Now we want to sort of give some context to that 3D map. So uh, first we're going to get some US city data from the USA boundaries data set. So I'm just going to uh, quickly sub that, subset that to Denver. And uh, I'm just going to use this call for US cities. I'm going to say the states I want to download are Colorado. Uh, I think just co. And then I want to say filter city equals Denver. So we're only going to add Denver as a label to this. And then we have to do this one kind of unique thing where we have to add the Latin longs as explicit coordinates. Uh, again, I have to transform this data because it needs to be in 2163. So we're going to do lat is equal to st coordinates. So we're just extracting the coordinates here to make an explicit column with Latin long. And it's the second column for lat. And long is the first one. OK, so now we'll have this city object, um, which you can't really see. But there it is. It's called Denver. And we can just take a quick look. Denver just has city names. And then it has this new thing that I just added called Latin long, which we're going to need to render it. So we'll copy this up here. Now we have our visualization again. And then now that this visualization uh, is up, this interactive 3D plot, we're going to just minimize it instead of closing it out. And we're going to add some text to the plot so you can like see where you are. Uh, so we're going to use render label to do that, to identify Denver. And we'll just check out the, the help for that. Um, 
this is a really common thing you have to do. So what this thing needs is a height map. So that's going to be the matrix. It needs some text. It needs a lat long. And it has to have an extent object so that it, it, um, it can know where to put these points, uh, these labels. So we're going to do render label. And because this is a this plot is already up, it knows that it's going to render, render the label here. So you don't have to add anything else. Um, we're going to say the height map is comat. We're going to say that the text is just Denver. We're going to say the lat is co is uh, Denver lat. The long is Denver lat uh, long. <laughs> and the extent is just the extent of our raster. So L of, and I just extract that with this attribute call. I think I could have done it with an extent call, but I think that'll work. And uh, yeah, now we'll run that. Oops, something's wrong. Oh, I need to add the Z scale, sorry. Just so that it knows how big to make this because the Z scale from our plot is 60. So we need to tell it that too. So let's run this again, just to be sure. It's plausible I got the Latin long backwards also if it, this doesn't work. Oh, no, it worked. Okay, so now we have this 3D map that has um, Denver labeled, which is nice. So um, now you can actually sort of like orient yourself a little bit. Uh, you could rerun that same render label command for like Fort Collins and Fruta and other things to add a bunch more context. But we don't want to do that. And so that now the final step is we want to add the elevation uh, data sets as points, or the, sorry, not the elevation data, the um, precip gauges. So uh, we're going to do that. So we have this precip gauge data called co-equal area. I'm just going to keep that label. And actually, you know what? I'm going to just do this up here. Um, which is, so up here we, we transformed it, and then I just need to add this uh, same lat long extraction code, because I need the lat and long again, uh, to plot these points. I'm gonna put that there. So that extracts the lats and longs, and now co-equal area has lats and longs, and now we wanna use the function called render points. So um, we'll just follow along again. We're going to render points. Comat. Huh, it only, I can just do altitude, I guess. So um, it wants the extent again. It wants the lat again. So this is. Um, Co equal area lat long is co equal area long. Um, the height map is still co mat. And then we're probably going to want to offset this. This will be in the units of the map. So we're going to want it to like stick above the landscape quite a bit so we can see it. Um, I'm just going to try with 500. And we'll just leave a basic color. We'll leave it as black, I think, is what it'll pre-decide. And now we're going to rent, oh, we got to render our 3D again because I closed it on accident. So now we'll render our label. And then we'll render our points. Oh, 500 was a bit excessive. Maybe it's in map units. <laughs> Let's try 10. Um, and this is the kind of like fiddly stuff when you're making like production maps for a paper or a research presentation or something. This stuff is what you'll be fiddling with. Hmm. We're losing, something's going crazy. Maybe I'll stop with the offset. No offset. And then I might pause this recording so I can <laughs> figure this out. So we got the rendered labels and then we'll try to render our points again. If they're still way up in the air, yeah, they are. I will uh, pause quickly and figure this out. Okay, I found what I was messing up. I was messing up the um, 
Z scale. You, you have to tell it how you're scaling the relationship so that they plot nicely. So we'll just do Z scale equals 60. Um, I do think we will want that offset of around 100 just so that these are above the landscape so we can see them. And then let's make them blue. Um, and I think you can mess with the size. So the base is three. I'd like to make these kind of big so we can see them. So I'm going to do nine. And then now um, I'm going to just re-render everything. So we'll re-render our label, and now we're going to render those um, uh, observation points. And this is what that looks like. Let's make it bigger. Maybe I went a little overboard on the size. Uh, and you can like hold down your your mouse and zoom in, and so you can see like you know some of these precip gauges are literally on the top of mountains, others are sort of like down deep in the valleys. Um, and so this is just like an example of a quick 3D map. Obviously, this is not the most practical reason you'd want this. There's lots of other ways you could do this kind of work. Uh, but this sort of works nicely. And um, you know, you can go from zero to a 3D map. And I think this video took 15 minutes to record. So um, that's sort of that. Um, I'm going to try to show you how to embed it in an HTML. And I will um, uh, sort of be right back. I need to make sure it works. OK, I uh, had to remind myself how to embed these in HTMLs. But you can uh, pretty easily embed at least one plot inside of your HTML. Uh, I was struggling to figure out how to embed multiple. But we can just quickly look at what the knitted version of this looks like. So we'll just view in web browser. Um, and so this is just the, the plot. And then it, at the bottom, you have this like interactive little 3D viz. I think they coarsen it so that it plots faster, but it's not too bad. And you can see that there's some translation issues when you pass it off to HTML. It made these uh, precip gauges square instead of circular, but for the most part, it, you know it works well enough. Um, so this is what will be up on the website now. And um, I appreciate your time. Have a good one.